All right, so Church Mouse has a great question here. So let me read her comment, and then I think I'm going to try to make a couple of points. Very interesting. Okay, I have a quick question for you. Years ago, my brother prayed the prayer of salvation with the hitchhiker he picked up. Then he married and had a baby daughter, but at 31 years of age got melanoma and raged at God before he died while he was while his child was still a baby. Still saved? Question mark. I hope so. All right, so let's I want to show you something here that I think is interesting uh, related to to this particular question, if you will. Okay. Um So I think it's mentioned uh, a couple of times, maybe three times here. I think if we go, first of all, I want to show you this here. There it is. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? There, That's in Psalm 22, right? Why art thou so far from helping me and from the words of my roaring? <clears throat> okay. That's interesting to me because um, I think there is a similarity. Okay, but here on the cross, when Jesus is on the cross and he's moments away, or he's, you know, he's a moment away from dying, right? So, and he says uh, with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabarithi. Well, I can't say that. He says, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Right? So, in a sense, He's raging against God. Now, uh, it's interesting because if uh, you, you if you were blind, you could look at this and say, well, this proves Jesus isn't God. Well, no, it doesn't. But if you're blind, you might see it that way, right? Because you don't see. Well, this is his flesh speaking, right? So... He's in the flesh just like we are in the flesh. So he experienced pain and suffering like we will, like we do, right? He's no def he's no different in that sense. But what he did is he destroyed this body and he rebuilt the new body. And so we put our hope in that new body, right? But it, it's interesting because here he's raging against God. And, and then, you know, the question that, church mouse has is uh, your brother still saved well let me ask you is Jesus still saved of course he is right so um, I think it comes down to an understanding uh, of what it means uh, to be saved right let's see if I can find that verse right there it is no that's not it whoops Whoops. Let's see. I think it is in John. Yeah, there it is. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man loves me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him. And we will come unto him and make our abode with him. See, he's saying right there that they are going to come and make their home in us when we are saved so it's not a matter of jesus being in heaven jesus is in us when we are saved let's see let's see if i can find another verse to support that probably not look at this okay let's see um oh, what was that verse here it might be Oh, no, this is going to take too long. Hold on a second. All right, found it. Uh, so I'm going to have to try to remember this. So Jesus Christ is in you. If you type that in, it's, it comes up the very first one. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves? How that Jesus Christ is in you, right? except you be rough rates, right? So don't be like the referees. That's the context of that message. So Jesus Christ is in you, right? And 
So we don't want to um, worry about losing our salvation. If the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed, right? And uh, so that's important to know. And, you know, um, oops, uh-oh, uh-oh, hold on a sec. I don't think that's a word. There we go. All right, so being confident of this very thing, that he which has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. So when you are saved, you can be free. You can be confident. You're not under the law. You're not in bondage to the law, so you don't have to worry about sinning. If you're worried about sinning, you can stop sinning because you are born a sinner. You are, As long as you're in this flesh, you're going to have those sinful desires. As long as those sinful desires are in you, you're a sinner and you need a savior there's nothing you can do about it the fact of the matter is we all need a savior okay all right so uh i think there was one more verse um but i apologize i don't remember what it is now uh let me think about this a second okay maybe it'll come to me but let me uh i want to show you something here related to this particular uh, subject so this uh, this poor lady here so I, i've been doing this to a number of people uh not getting nasty with them at all just like a sort of an experiment these people that are against the gospel of jesus christ okay they don't believe that what jesus did was enough so i want to ask them a simple question what must i do be saved and I would I would encourage you all to do the same thing what must I do to be saved first of all you better be able to answer that question all right so let's see what this lady says here or not okay there we go um, all right there there it is so I ask her you know what must I do to be saved and she says my advice to you is pray to God all right pray to God and you'll be saved is that is that in the Bible is that John 3, 16? Whosoever prays to God shall be saved. And, guide, and, and for his Holy Spirit to guide you and to direct you to straighten your path. Uh, so that's the gospel, I guess. All right? Let's read the rest of this. Read the Bible, especially the book of Proverbs. Read the New Testament carefully. If you approach it with an opened heart, willing to be taught, our Heavenly Father will teach you. And God bless you, and may his joy be upon you. So that's a pleasant answer, obviously a sincere answer, and uh, this lady appears to be nice. Okay. Now, uh, after a conversation, uh, she becomes confused, and so she wants me to ask her what I believe salvation is. And I... I give a long response here, all right? But uh, I did that on purpose so that maybe she'll notice a pattern. It's the same thing. Believe in the Lord Jesus, right? Uh, just like in um, Hebrews 11, believe. Uh, it's all about faith. It's always been about faith. And um, so it's very interesting. It's, it's If I could simplify it, it's John 3, 16. Believe in the Lord Jesus and you shall have everlasting life. Okay, if thou shalt confess with the mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So it's not about our works. It's about the works that were done for us by Jesus Christ. Okay. Now, it's interesting here, and I hope this lady gets it and at least has time to think about this. Right. Morning, everybody. I know it's dark. I like it that way. <laughs> okay, so let me repeat. You know, I'm, I'm me, up early. In case you didn't hear that. I don't think it's 6 o'clock in the morning yet, but I was watching some YouTube. Wow. The only, I, I guess I, I... Good morning, everybody. I know it's dark. I like it that way. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. I know it's dark. I like it that way. <laughs> you know, I'm, I 